Good morning, patrons. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to you all for your continued support before I um, begin uh, with this video. As ever, I'm able to do this, to make these videos, to paint here in my studio, to compose music, to write about composing and painting and, and the links between the two um, because of the help I'm getting on a monthly basis from uh, your donations. So it's fabulous to get this. It, it's a real motivator as well because I know there are people who value my, my work, my time, what I have to say sufficiently to actually support me financially. And, and uh, certainly in these rather financially desperate times, it, it's, it's heartwarming to know that and to know that people care and what I do matters. So thank you very, very much for that once again. And I think I've said this before, but um, like, like all composers, like all artists um, who are seeking patronage, we always need more people to help us and support us. So if you do have any friends, um, any people you know who you think may be interested to um, share in a bit of this fun, uh, this ne <laughs> never-ending joyride that is my life as an artist, um, who have some interest in that, in, 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 in the things that I'm doing, either directly or indirectly, indirect please do share uh, your own patronage uh, with them and let them know what you're doing and how you feel about it. And if possible, um, encourage them to, to sign up as well, because it would be fantastic to keep my family of sponsors um, growing all of the time. Um, the more growth there is, the more I can do, the more time I have to work on the things that, um, well, the things that I think matter. Uh, so, so, so uh, yes, thank you again. If you can tell anybody, please do. Uh, I will appreciate that greatly. Anyway, now on to the, uh, to the video. See you shortly. Hi. Another painting, and this time I wanted to continue the conversation I was having with you about the relationship between my painting and my composition, because uh, this, of course, is, as I keep telling everybody, very, very central to my work and something that has preoccupied me for many years and is the, uh, the subject of my book, Music, Painting, Landscape and Me, which I'm currently writing. The last time I spoke, I, I dealt a lot with um, symbolic references, reference and icons in paintings and music and how they related or didn't relate to the outside world and how um, I constructed my work symbolically to uh, represent in some way uh, or signify things that weren't actually there. Um, saying that, you know, here's a painting, it has objects in it that may signify certain things to you when you look at it, like the sky or hills or landscape formations. Um, when you listen to a piece of music, you may um, hear or imagine you hear particular references to uh, different things in the real world, or it may create an effect within you that you um, correspond to other emotions or experiences. But in any event, none of these things are actually necessarily there in as far as physically, tangibly, tang tangibly or empirically there. Um, they are represented symbolically. So I wanted to talk again about how it is that I move between paintings and music and something about the, uh, the, the mechanism that is at play when I, when I do that. Um, and I think the easiest way to describe that uh, is, is to, to think in terms of finding meaning or finding significance in uh, the world around me and in the things that I do. So with the paintings and the music, I find meaning through the act of interpretation and through the act of making and interpreting what I've made bit by bit by bit. 
When I start a painting or a piece of music, I don't necessarily start off, uh, in fact, I never really start off with an end point in mind. I don't know what the painting or the, the composition is going to signify until I've actually made it or until I'm somewhere through the process of making it. <clears throat> and meaning is something that I construct as I go along. Um, this sort of construction applies to virtually every single act, every stage of making, everything that I do, every paintbrush that I make, uh, every mark that I make, every line, every selection of colour, every note, every rhythmic configuration, all the imaginings around what music may be like when it plays out in time, the materials, how they combine, the relationships, all of these aspects, every tiny aspect, moment by moment, bit by bit, as I construct them, I interpret them. And I interpret them, and through that interpretation, I get some sort of significance or meaningfulness. And it is that significance or meaningfulness that then informs me about the next step, uh, whether to moderate it, change it, enhance it, leave it alone, move on to something else, whatever. It's building, 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 building through an assimilative, cumulative, responsive, reflective, dynamic sort of process that is constantly based on interpretation. Hermeneutics is the, the fancy word for it, but it's about interpreting those, the, the, the symbols that are brought about through the sounds, through the, the mark making, the lines and their significance. So within each of these art forms, I'm constantly creating significance. I'm constantly interpreting that. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm constantly mark making, I'm interpreting that and from it drawing significance and meaning. Now, the book and my work in general is very much a tripartite sort of thing between landscape, music and painting. So how is it that I move between these things and how can I sort of legitimately claim that there's any connection between them at all? Well, I would say again that everything stems from my interpretation of the, the, the outside, the external world, my concept of what exists outside of me, particularly um, my concept, my creation um, of the landscape and what, what that means to me. And when I'm in the landscape, uh, I, I experience a whole range of things through a whole range of senses, through sight, smell, uh, you name it. There, there, there's just a sort of three-dimensional bombardment of things, somatic uh, information that's coming in and I'm perceiving and I'm interpreting and I'm building some kind of mean, meaningfulness about. I'm creating relationships. Uh, I, I'm placing myself contextually within those relationships and interpreting them contextually within the wider relationships that are all around me. It's those sorts of relationships that feed into the music and into the painting. Again, through interpretation. It's that constant uh, unfolding and becoming through interpretation. So when I walk in a landscape, the act of walking is a compositional act. That can be a compo compositional act in, in, in terms of creating a painting or in terms of creating a piece of music. But I am receiving masses and masses of information from the landscape around me. I'm interpreting that in various ways. I'm creating significance and relationships. And it is those significances and relationships that end up... Uh, symbolically represented in a piece of music or in, in a, an artwork, a painting. Now, in a straightforward sense, you can sort of think of looking at a landscape and flattening it in some way into basic line constructions and using those line constructions as a graphic relationship to contours, densities, activity in a musical composition. Or more mimetically, uh, looking at how you translate that into a painting and its topographical uh, features and landscape relationships and objects. But when you've got a piece of music, um, you can't necessarily reduce that to lines in quite the same way. You may want to, you may not. For me, translating or transducting or taking something of one set of values that exist in one media and moving them to another set of uh, similar values in another media 
is an interpretive act. It's, a, it's, a, it's more hermeneutics. So when I'm looking at a painting, I read it not only as a visual thing, um, as a painting, but also as a piece of music. And I automatically um, transduct, translate the dynamics and the relationships, uh, the signs and symbols, the lines and the marks, the dynamics, the gestures, into a musical equivalent. And that musical equivalent, through the act of interpretation, becomes um, something that to me feels of equal value. Now, I can't articulate that necessarily in words. I can't point to it and say, oh, yes, there's, there's X amount of value in this and X amount of value in that, because it doesn't work like that. It's, it's a very personal interpretive thing. But regardless of that, the significance and the meaning still moves from one to the other, even though you can't necessarily uh, identify that as an, as an empirical um, quantity. So my translation of paintings to music, music to, pa music to painting, of walking in the landscape and thinking about compositional aspects, of um, absorbing lots and lots of sensory materials and stimuli, processing, processing those neurally, um, then then actions that move into paintings and into composition through those particular practices and techniques. They all involve masses and masses of continual interpretation. Everything is about interpretation. Um, there, there, there is no end to it. So I create meaning and significance and connection between music, painting and landscape through interpretation, through ongoing and continual interpretation. This, to me, makes my paintings meaningful and my music meaningful in relation to one another and in relation to the wider world. Whether that meaningfulness trans transmits to other people in a value-for-value, like-for-like way is very, very questionable. But what I imagine does happen is that the things that I paint, the things that I write musically, the sounds, trigger interpretive actions within others and hermeneutically they establish their own significance and their own meaning through the work that I've produced. That may very well overlap. Um, it may not and it doesn't matter as far as I'm concerned. I'm, I'm in, the, in, in, the, uh, in the art of making stuff and I know other people will interpret it and I know that they will create their own meaning and their own significance from the actions that I take. For me, that's what being an artist is. I'm a builder, I'm a maker. And the things that I build and the things that I make are put out into the world for other people to do with what they will, to interpret how they will, to find their own significance, their own meaning, their own stories, their own interpretation. So that's really how I feel that all of these things are linked. They are linked through my hermeneutic capacity, uh, through my ability to interpret through my inner symbolic world and how that relates to what I interpret, what I see, what I hear, what I experience. And all these things are linked in a big soup of me being an artist and a composer. I write in a lot more detail about all of these things in my book, and I'm still writing my book. It's a huge task, um, but I'm very, very much enjoying it. And the more I'm writing it, the more I am discovering about what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it. Having said that, there's a lot of unknown quantities in there as well. Um, and I don't think I'm ever going to answer all of those things. But even thinking about interpretation and hermeneutics and meaning in the way that I have been, uh, it, it helps me to feel much more situated in the work that I'm doing and to have a better grasp of how I'm doing it. Anyway, I hope that's not too confusing because I am talking straight from the top of my head in a very sort of down the pub, have a pint of beer conversational sort of way. I may be rambling. I may be uh, repeating myself. I'm sure I am. <clears throat> but I hope the essence of what I'm saying uh, is intelligible and sensible to you and that in some way it helps if you do have that question, what is the connection between my work, the different aspects of my work, or even your own work and how you think about music, composition, painting, landscape, sculpture, architecture, life, anything, 
how do you interpret those things and, and what is meaningfulness and significance to you? Anyway, I hope that's been um, interesting. Uh, it's certainly always interesting for me to talk like this. And today I made my video before I started painting, uh, which is, yeah, great because I'm not covered in green and yellow and red splodges and all the rest of it. So I think that's a, that's a bit of an advantage. Anyway, I'll speak soon and uh, keep safe and be happy. Bye-bye.